Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is Thevenin's Theorem and the Maximum Power Transfer Theorem Applied to DC Circuits. Our objective is to examine several illustrated examples of Thevenin's Theorem and the Maximum Power Transfer Theorem. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with both Thevenin's Theorem and the Maximum Power Transfer Theorem as illustrated in the DC Thevenin's Theorem and DC Maximum Power Transfer Theorem lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you lack the requisite level of familiarity with these topics, please review the aforementioned supporting material and return to this lecture when you're so qualified. If you've been following this playlist in its intended sequence, you are no doubt aware that Thevenin's Theorem is a procedure that simplifies a complicated series parallel circuit into an equivalent simple series circuit. The original and the Thevenin's equivalent should ideally behave the same, and importantly, the load resistor should be none the wiser to the substitution. Of note is not only the substantial ease with which calculations can be made using the Thevenin's equivalent circuit, but also how much less components, connections, and confusion is involved in the physical construction of the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. The Thevenin's equivalent circuit consists of a single DC voltage source, called ETH, in series with a single resistor, RTH, in series with a variable load resistor, R load. To simplify a complicated circuit into its Thevenin's equivalent, we need to solve for these two quantities, ETH and RTH. Additionally, you are no doubt aware that the DC maximum power transfer theorem states that the maximum power will be transferred to a load resistor when the load resistor is equal in magnitude to that of the Thevenin's equivalent resistor. Mastery of Thevenin's theorem and the maximum power transfer theorem necessitates active participation on your part, and as such, I'm encouraging you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers do not match those illustrated, by all means feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Our first example problem features a series parallel combination of four elements. Stage one of this example problem necessitates we solve for the Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the variable load resistor R load. Once we've got these values, we'll move on to stage two and examine maximum power transfer for this circuit. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage one on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's first solve for ETH, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage. To solve for ETH, one must remove the load resistor from the nodes of interest. Next, one determines the open circuit voltage seen across the nodes of interest. In this modified circuit, current only travels through R1 and R2 in a series fashion. No current travels through R3, and there will be no voltage drop across it. R3 can effectively be removed for consideration. In this case, the open circuit voltage is the voltage across R2. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates the open circuit voltage is 14.3 volts. This is our Thevenin's equivalent voltage, ETH. Let's set these calculations aside and move on to solving for RTH, the Thevenin's equivalent resistor. Solving for RTH also necessitates the removal of the load resistor. Additionally, one must remove the source or sources from consideration. One removes a voltage source by replacing it with a short. One removes a current source by replacing it with an open. Finally, one determines the resistance of this modified circuit at the terminals of interest. Make note that RTH is not the resistance seen by the original source. RTH is the resistance seen by the load resistor when the source has been removed. Let me remind you that incorporating shorts and opens inside your original circuit and shifting perspective from the source to the load may fundamentally alter the nature of the original series parallel circuit. An ohm in your position at the terminals of interest would see R3 in series with a parallel combination of R1 and R2. This presents a resistance of roughly 523.6 ohms. This is our Thevenin's equivalent resistor, RTH. Our Thevenin's equivalent circuit is therefore the series combination of ETH at 14.3 volts and RTH at 523.6 ohms in series with our variable load resistor, R load. Stage two of this illustrated example problem now dictates we determine the load resistor, which receives maximum power. Additionally, see if we can solve for voltage, current, and power for the load resistor at conditions of maximum power. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage two on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The DC maximum power transfer theorem states the maximum real power will be transferred to load when a load resistor equals the Thevenin's equivalent resistor. Therefore, our variable load resistor should see maximum power when it also has a value of 523.6 ohms. An application of the voltage divider rule suggests voltage across the load at maximum power conditions is 7.1 volts. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates the current through the load at maximum power conditions is 13.6 milliamperes. Finally, the DC power formula suggests the load experiences 97.4 milliwatts of power at maximum power conditions. Given this represents maximum power conditions, any change in load resistor magnitude, more or less, should result in less real power delivery. All right, I believe we've accomplished our desired goals and can move on to the next illustrated example problem. Our next illustrated example problem features a series parallel combination of four resistive elements and a current source. Stage one of the example problem necessitates we solve for the Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the variable load resistor R load. 
Once we've got these values, we'll move on to stage two and examine power transfer for this circuit. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage one on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's first solve for ETH, the evidence equivalent voltage. To solve for ETH, one removes the load resistor from the nodes of interest and determines the open circuit voltage seen across the nodes of interest. With the load resistor removed, no current travels through R3. All current will travel through R1 and R2 in a parallel configuration. The open circuit voltage is therefore the voltage across either V1 or V2. An application of the current divider rule demonstrates that I2 is 77 milliampers. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that V2 is 20.8 volts. This is our Thevenin's equivalent voltage, ETH. Let's set these calculations aside and move on to RTH, the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. Solving for RTH also necessitates the removal of the load resistor. Additionally, one must also remove the source or sources from consideration. One removes a voltage source by replacing it with a short. One removes the current source by replacing it with an open. Finally, one determines the resistance of this modified circuit at the terminals of interest. Make note that RTH is not the resistance seen by the original source. RTH is the resistance seen by the load resistor when the source has been removed. Let me remind you that incorporating shorts and opens inside your original circuit and shifting perspective from the source to the load may fundamentally alter the nature of the original series parallel circuit. When we remove the current source by replacing with an open circuit, an ohmmeter placed at the terminals of interest sees R3 in series with a parallel combination of R1 and R2. The series parallel combination presents a resistance of 618.5 ohms. This is our Thevenin's equivalent resistance, RTH. Our Thevenin's equivalent circuit is therefore the series combination of ETH at 20.8 volts and RTH at 618.5 ohms in series with a variable load resistor, R load. Stage two of this illustrated example problem now dictates we determine the load resistor which receives maximum power. Additionally, See so you can solve for the voltage across the load, current through the load, and power dissipated by the load at conditions of maximum power. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage two on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The DC maximum power transfer theorem states the maximum power will be transferred to a load when the load resistor equals the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. Therefore, our variable load resistor should see maximum power when it has a value of 618.5 ohms. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates the voltage across the load at maximum power conditions is 10.4 volts. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the load at maximum power conditions is 16.8 milliampers. Finally, the DC power formula suggests that the load experience is 174.7 milliwatts of power. Given this represents maximum power conditions, any change in load resistor magnitude, more or less, should result in less power delivery. All right, I believe we've accomplished our desired goals and can move on to the next illustrated example problem. Our next problem features a series parallel combination of four resistive elements and a voltage source. Stage one of the example problem necessitates we solve the Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the variable load resistor. Once we've got these values, we'll move on to stage two and examine maximum power transfer for this circuit. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage one on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's first solve for ETH, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage. To solve for ETH, one removes the load resistor from the nodes of interest and determines the open circuit voltage. The removal of the load resistor presents any current from traveling through R2 and R3. With no current traveling through, no voltage will be dropped across R2 and R3, and they can be effectively removed from consideration. The modified circuit is essentially R1 and the voltage source. As such, R1 experiences all voltage drop across it. As such, the open circuit voltage is 36 volts. This is the Thevenin's equivalent voltage, ETH. Let's set these calculations aside and move on to solving for RTH, the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. Solving for RTH also necessitates the removal of the load resistor. Additionally, one must remove the source or sources from consideration. One removes a voltage source by replacing it with a short. One removes a current source by replacing it with an open. Finally, one determines the resistance of the modified circuit at the terminals of interest. Again, make note that RTH is not the resistance seen by the original source. RTH is the resistance seen at the terminals of interest when the source has been removed. Let me remind you by incorporating shorts and opens inside your circuit and shifting perspective from the source to the load may fundamentally alter the nature of the original series parallel circuit. In this case, the substitution of the short circuit for the source has effectively bypassed R1. As such, an ohmmeter placed at the terminals of interest would only see R2 and R3 in parallel with one another. R2 in parallel with R3 is 442.1 ohms. This is our Thevenin's equivalent resistance, RTH. Our Thevenin's equivalent circuit is therefore the series combination of ETH at 36 volts 
and RTH at 442.1 ohms in series with a variable load resistor, R load. Stage two of this illustrated example problem now dictates we determine the load resistance which receives maximum power. Additionally, see if you can solve for voltage, current, and power for the load at conditions of maximum power. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage two on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The DC maximum power transfer theorem states that maximum power will be transferred to a load when the load resistor equals the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. Therefore, our variable load resistor should see maximum power when it also has a value of 442.1 ohms. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates that voltage across the load at maximum power conditions is 18 volts. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the load at maximum power conditions is 40.7 milliampers. Finally, the DC power formula suggests the load experienced 732.8 milliwatts of power. Given this represents maximum power conditions, any change in load resistance magnitude, less or greater, should result in less power delivery. All right, I believe we've accomplished our desired goals and can move on to the next illustrated example problem. Our next illustrated example problem features a series parallel combination of four resistive elements and a voltage source. Stage one of the example problem necessitates we solve for the Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the variable load resistor. Once we've got these values, we move on to stage two and examine maximum power transfer for the circuit. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage one on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's first solve for ETH, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage. To solve for ETH, one removes the load resistor of interest and determines the open circuit voltage seen across the nodes of interest. Let's start by removing the load resistor. Note the removal of the load resistor has fundamentally altered the nature of the original series parallel circuit, and that all current must travel through R1 and then it splits into two paths, one afforded by R2, the other by R3. R2 and R3 are in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime, and R single prime is perfectly in series with R1. The open circuit voltage is the voltage seen across V2 and V3, or V single prime. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. The application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that V single prime is 21 volts. This is our Thevenin's equivalent voltage, ETH. Let's set these calculations aside and move on to solving for RTH, the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. Solving for RTH also necessitates the removal of the load resistor. Additionally, one must remove the source or sources from consideration. One removes a voltage source by replacing it with a short. One removes a current source by replacing it with an open. Finally, one determines the resistance of this modified circuit from the terminals of interest. Again, make note that RTH is not the resistance seen by the original source. RTH is the resistance seen by the load resistor when the source has been removed. Let me remind you that incorporating shorts and opens inside your original circuit and shifting perspective from the source to the load may fundamentally alter the nature of the original series parallel circuit. An ohmmeter placed at the terminals of interest will see R1, R2, and R3 in parallel with one another. R1, R2, and R3 in parallel present a resistance of 170.7 ohms. This is our Thevenin's equivalent resistance, RTH. Our Thevenin's equivalent circuit is therefore the series combination of ETH at 21 volts and RTH at 170.7 ohms. Stage 2 of this illustrated example problem now dictates we determine the load resistance which receives maximum power. Additionally, see if you can solve for voltage, current, and power for the load at conditions of maximum power. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage two on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The DC maximum power transfer theorem states that maximum power will be transferred to a load resistance when the load resistance equals the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for that circuit. Therefore, our variable load resistor should see maximum power when it also has a value of 170.7 ohms. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates that the voltage across the load resistor is 10.5 volts at maximum power conditions. A subsequent application of Ohm's law suggests current through the load at maximum power conditions will be 61.5 milliampers. Finally, an application of the DC power formula suggests the load will dissipate 646.4 milliwatts of power. Given this represents maximum power conditions, any change in load resistor magnitude, lesser or greater, should result in less real power delivery. All right, I believe we've accomplished our desired goals and can move on to our last illustrated example problem. Our last illustrated example problem features a series parallel combination of four resistive elements and two sources, a 72 volt voltage source and a 40 milliampere current source. Stage one of the example problem necessitates we solve for the Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the variable load resistor. Once we've got these values, we move on to stage two and examine maximum power transfer for this circuit. Here's a hint, use the superposition theorem to determine the open circuit voltage. Solving for the Thevenin's equivalent resistance, however, can be done in one step. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage one on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. 
Let's first solve for ETH, Thevenin's equivalent voltage. This will take two steps because we've got two sources. First, let's solve from the perspective of the voltage source by removing the current source by replacing it with an open circuit. To solve for ETH, one must remove the load resistor from the nodes of interest. Next, one determines the open circuit voltage seen across the nodes of interest. In this case, the modified circuit is the series combination of R1, R2, and R3. In this case, the open circuit voltage is the voltage across V2. An application of voltage divider rule demonstrates that V2 is 32.5 volts, oriented positive negative, top to bottom. Let's save this result and now determine the open circuit voltage based on the contributions of the current source. With the voltage source removed from consideration by replacing it with a short circuit, the current source sees R1 and R3 in series with one another. This series combination is in parallel with R2. The series combination of R1 and R3 present a resistance of 570 ohms. Let's call this simplification R single prime. R single prime is perfectly in parallel with R2. An application of the current divider rule demonstrates that I2 is 21.9 milliamperes. A subsequent application of DC Ohm's law suggests that V2 is 10.3 volts, oriented positive to negative, top to bottom. We now need to summate these two results accounted for magnitude, polarity, and direction to determine the Thevenin's equivalent voltage seen by the load resistor. The open circuit voltage produced by the voltage source and the current source are in the same direction. These are aiding contributions. 32.5 volts plus 10.3 volts means the open circuit voltage is 42.8 volts, oriented positive to negative, top to bottom. Let's set these calculations aside and move on to solving for RTH, the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. This can be done in one step. Solving for RTH also necessitates the removal of the load resistor. Additionally, one must remove the source or sources from consideration. One removes the voltage source by replacing it with a short. One removes the current source by replacing it with an open. Finally, one determines the resistance of this modified circuit at the terminals of interest. Again, make note that RTH is not the resistance seen by the original source. RTH is the resistance at the terminals of interest when the load resistor and the sources have been removed. Let me remind you that incorporating shorts and opens inside your original circuit and shifting perspective from the source to the load may fundamentally alter the nature of the original series parallel circuit. By short circuiting the voltage source and open circuiting the current source, it's effectively replaced R1 and R3 perfectly in series with one another. The series combination of R1 and R3 is in parallel with R2. This presents a resistance of 257.6 ohms. This is the Thevenin's equivalent resistance, RTH. The Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the variable load resistor is therefore the series combination of ETH at 42.8 volts and RTH at 257.6 ohms in series of the variable load resistor, R load. Stage two of this illustrated example problem now dictates we determine the load resistance which receives the maximum power. Additionally, see if you can solve for voltage, current, and power for the load at conditions of maximum power. By all means, pause the lecture and try stage two on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The DC maximum power transfer theorem states that the maximum real power will be transferred to a load when the load resistor equals the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. Therefore, the variable load resistor that should see maximum power has a value of 257.6 ohms. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates the voltage across the load at maximum power conditions is 21.4 volts. Subsequent application of Ohm's law suggests the current through the load at conditions of maximum power is 83.2 milliamperes. Finally, the DC power formula suggests the load experiences 1.8 watts. Given this represents maximum power conditions, any change in load resistance magnitude, less or greater, should result in less real power delivery. All right, that's about enough illustrated examples for now. In conclusion, this lecture examines several illustrated examples of Thevenin's theorem and the maximum power transfer theorem. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.